What's up guys, Grim here. If you're one of the people that left a comment in the comment section below of the last Saturday video and left your character name and server, then you are entered into the 700 credit package giveaway from the Rift store. And if you're the winner, you get to pick anything from the store that's 700 credits or less and we will send it to you in the mail. And the winner of that video is Congratulations, sir. We finally had somebody win from Fablight. This week, we're giving away something pretty big. In the last Godlike Arena tournament, the 5v5 one, they did a big giveaway at the end of the tournament, which was a Dream Soul bundle. And one of my guildies won it. Zalit in my guild won the Dream Soul bundle, and he said that he already has it, so he wants me to do a giveaway. So thank you to Godlike Awesomeness for providing this prize to Zalit and for him choosing to donate it to our channel in order to do this giveaway. You rock Zalit and we really appreciate it. And if you want to win this Dream Soul Bundle, make sure that you leave a comment in the comment section below with your character name and server so that if you are the winner, we know exactly who to give it to. And make sure that you actually need the Dream Soul Bundle. If you've already got it, we've got to pick somebody else. And of course, make sure that you hit the like button, uh, the thumbs up, and make sure that you're subscribed. Because if you are not subscribed, then we will know and you will not become the winner good luck everyone what's up guys today we're going to go into the paralord build which is the paragon warlord version that a lot of people are running right now it's currently the flavor of the month for warriors so yeah if you guys aren't in the know of what's in right now i want to be able to provide a video for you guys so that you know exactly what to run to get the maximum burst at this current time so this is the paralord here let's jump right into it and mind you we will have a link to this build in the description below so go ahead and check out down there if you want a web link so that you can see this uh soul build without having to squint at your screen and also all of the macros will be down there so yeah check it out and um I do have to give a disclaimer that this is not the uh one that is used by a lot of other people this is my own variation of it and i feel like it's a superior one to the other one so yeah i always look at other people's builds and i'm like why why did they put a point there and stuff like that and this is what i like to run you guys can change it around all you want so all right let's jump right into it as you can see the 51 paragon 25 warlord zero tempest and this is the standard for all paralord builds they always go 51 in paragon and 25 into warlord so it's all about where you put the points and the macros that you put afterwards that makes it unique to the other ones and uh uh, the first time that I seen a build like this was Harry's Lord of Ward version. So I kind of want to give him credit for it. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Teaching of the Five Rings, we got five points into that. One point into Wrist Strike. Five points into Weapon Familiarity. Three points into Double Jeopardy. Four points into Devoted Training. Three points into Grace of the Five Rings. One point into Flinching Strike. Three points into flowing strikes. Three points into one-two one, punch. One point into fleet of foot. Three points into deadly parity. One point into shifting blades. Two points into weapon master. One point into tranquility. Two points into improved flowing strikes. Two points into weapon finesse or swift finesse. Uh, one point into death touch. Three points into Force of Will. One points into Duality. Two points into Precise Strikes. Two points into Analyze Weakness. One point into grasp, Grasping the Horizon. One point into Unleash. Alright. And then the 25 into Warlord. We got five points into Soldier's Might. Five points into Strength of Arms. 
three points into tactical advantage, one point into backhand, two points into calculating, one point into into the breach, one point into combat veteran, one point into defensive maneuver, three points into thick of battle, one point into no permission to die, and I chose to go two points into three moves ahead, which is going to increase your piercing thrust. And most people are not putting points into this, and I do not see why they are not. Because two point, the buffing up piercing thrust is huge. Piercing thrust is always going off. So that's a huge ability right there. Do not... I think you need to put points into that. So... And also, uh, uh, some of the other reasons why I put points into certain things, some people are not going two points into calculating. I think that is very important to put the points into that because it increases your finishers, which is also your shifting blades. You want that to be hitting as hard as possible in your burst macro. And you'll see what it is if you're not familiar with the burst macro, so I'll explain it in a minute. Uh, there are three things that make this build really pop. Now, one of them is, uh, flowing strikes there, which hitting with an ability, uh, with an ability attack grants 45% chance to increase critical hit chance by 15% for 15 seconds. So that's one of the things that you want to watch for whenever you're hitting uh, somebody. If it pops up, you may even have K alerts make it pop up. That way you know when to hit your burst macros and stuff. And also you got improved flowing strikes going into that, which increases your damage by 10%. So that's pretty huge. Uh, the Another thing that makes this uh, thing really pop is Thick of Battle, which... It is a defensive thing. It reduces ranged uh, damage to you by 15%, but it also increases damage done to nearby enemies by 12%. So that's going to be really big. Um, let's see. And the other thing that really triggers with this is uh, Unleash which it makes it to where you get stacks of readiness. Once you get five stacks of readiness, your attack power and weapon contribution is increased by 20%. So that is huge. So those three things is what really makes this pop besides uh, the macro, which I'm about to show. All right, into the macros. We got the builder macro here. Uh, I'm not going to read all of it because it's in the description below. But what makes this build macro really good, you've got your snare in there, of course, the eye of the storm. If you want to micromanage that, you can put it on a different button, but I put it into the uh, macro. So piercing thrust is going to be firing off all of the time. It's just one of those good abilities that every time you charge, every time you pull, every time you use a finisher, it's going to fire off. So it's going to be going all the time. What really makes this pop, though, is that it has Final Blessing and a Quick Death. Both of those are abilities that they only work if your opponent is at 30% health or less. So once they get, you're going to have a lot of DPS and a lot of burst. And then if they get low in life down to that 30% or less, those two abilities are going to fire off and hit for a truckload of damage. So if they get low, you're probably going to kill them after that, which makes this build really cool because it's really good at making sure that the people not only get low, but they go to the graveyard. So if you need, uh, like I said, all the, all the macros will be in the description below. So this is the finish macro here, and this fires off grasping the horizon, which, uh, makes it to where your uh, your reaping harvest is going to have a range to it. So it's 20 meter range, which I like to fire that off every time that it's off a of cooldown. So I go ahead and put it into the finisher macro. Um, let's see. And it also makes it to where you don't have to spec into uh, Tempest for Skyfall. That way you don't have to have a range finisher because grasping the horizon is going to give it a range. 
And here is your burst macro, which is what really makes this thing pop as well. And um, so it fires off shifting blades. And then we put hard hitting abilities to happen after shifting blades because uh, you use three combo points and then fire off shifting blades. And then we're going to use death touch, tranquility. And then if they're below 30% health, it'll fire off fi final blessing. If they are not, then it'll use rising waterfall instead but we're wanting to get the max damage that we can out of this burst macro so we put hard hard hitting abilities after shifting blades okay and there goes our charge macro there and this is two real charges and then you got the the third one there which is thunderous leap and it's a planar ability so if you do not have it make sure that you take it out of the macro out of your planar attunement if you are attuned to it. Um, also I want to say that if you do not have uh, the Storm Legion Souls and you don't have Tempest you can go ahead and use Champion so that you have an extra charge as well. So there you go. Let's go into the buffs here. We got Turn the Blade um, which you want to keep that on. Uh, if you don't know why to keep it on, if you think the the reduced damage is not worth it then you're wrong because it is absolutely worth it and it's going to keep you from getting energy starved um, way of the wind and also the, another reason why to keep turn the blade on is because we're specced into uh, making it not as bad of a downside so normally you would get a 33 uh, percent reduction in your damage now it's only 20 percent which makes it even more worth it Okay, now we got Way of the Mountain, which is going to prevent you from being uh, knocked back. And basically, whenever you're sticking on people and doing all this damage, they're trying everything to get you off of them. They're not wanting you to be in melee range. This is going to prevent them from being able to peel you in any way, pretty much. This is going to make you stick on them and absolutely destroy their life. All right, Defensive Posture, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, focus of body, enhanced conductivity, and of course your planar buffs, guild buffs, all that good stuff. Alright, on my bar we have, on the action bar down here, we have the builder, which is the setting moon macro, the finisher macro, which is the reaping harvest, we got the burst macro, which is the shifting blade one, and then I also put a flurry on my bar there and I use that in case somebody is uh, seeming to keep me at bay for some reason they're they're like running a little bit faster than me or something like that I go ahead and pop flurry because it's a 20 meter range channeled attack so it's gonna really eat into them if they're keeping me at range somehow which they probably won't but I do like to pop it every once in a while and then we got no permission to die then we got our charge macro there which has into the breach we got our pull we've only got one pull on this build but you've got you know two or three charges you've got the pull you've got a snare you've got everything's going to be working with you you don't need two pulls really um fleet of foot which i highly recommend you only use this to get away a lot of people pop it in order to chase people I don't think so man if you're getting in a lot of trouble you want to be able to use your defensive maneuver which is going to make you leap back and then be able to pop your fleet of foot so you can continue to run if you've only got one method of getting away such as your defensive maneuver then you know if if they get on you if they charge you if they pull you right after you use your defensive maneuver or whatever happens then you're not going to have your fleet of foot to get away afterwards. I think you need to keep it on separate button and use it as a getaway and not as a pursuit. Uh, break free. Make sure that you use your break free separate from everything else. Do not put in your macros or you are going to get owned once you get uh, cornered by multiple enemies or something. Uh, flinching strike, which is your interrupt. Uh, wrist strike which is your debilitate for five seconds uh, predictable movements for your stun and that's pretty much the bars okay now let's go into how to play this 
it's very very simple but there is strategy to it so let's say that we go up and we got somebody targeted let's go ahead and charge right in and we'll start firing off our uh, builder macro here in this from the charge in right off the bat you're going to be firing off that piercing thrust which we got hitting for extra damage from the points that we put into our soul tree okay so once you get up to three combo points you can use your finisher if you like which will hit decently hard and it can be used at a range if they're running away from you you can still fire off your finisher from a range because we have grasping the horizon macroed into it but if you do not uh, want to just hit your finisher if you want to go ahead and go into your burst then uh, three combo points is what you need so let's go ahead and switch over to this one uh, usually you want to use your burst if they're at 50% life or less you know somewhere around in that range you don't want to usually use your burst uh, if they're at full life you can if you want but I don't recommend it because our goal is to get them to that 30% range that way our builder will fire off a quick death and final blessing which is going to probably kill them so that's the goal get them to that 30% life and then after that is cake so go ahead and fire off your shifting blades which is going to consume your three combo points bam and then you keep spamming it until you got three combo points afterwards once you've got that third combo point you know that your burst macro is over it's used all three abilities and it's over you don't have to keep track of it at all and you can use that burst every 15 seconds all of your abilities will be up and ready to go once shifting blades is ready to go again it's every 15 seconds which is an it's insane amount of burst so then we can go right back into our finisher once our uh, cooldown for shifting blades is down so once shifting blades becomes available again we can burst again if we want and keep hitting it until you get the three combo points and you know your uh, your sh burst macro is done let's say that they're running away from you and you can't really catch them for whatever reason you know you can go ahead and pop your flurry and as you can see it kind of slices and dices from a range there all right you want to make sure that you're using your pulls uh, use your charges as well so that your piercing thrust will become available every time you can and if you get in trouble of course you can use your defensive maneuver to jump back and then pop your fleet of foot so that you're running away make sure you use that stuff for defensive reasons don't don't try to get at people by using your defensive maneuver to leap into your opponent or something like that you know you're just going to set yourself up to die all the time and that's the thing about pvp is it's about surviving so that you can kill people and if you're not able to kill people and if you're not able to survive then your goal isn't going to be reached um let's see okay so it's basically really really simple you're just charging in you're hitting your builder you're hitting your finisher and then uh whenever you're ready to burst you can go ahead and hit shifting blades once your three combo points are available um other than that that's really all about it oh 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 i should go into this now this is a little bit more of an advanced move uh that people just do not utilize it's not really advanced but it's what people don't really use too much uh your stuns here you got a stun and you got to debilitate okay which one do you use first do you use your stun or you do you use your debilitate the thing is is everybody's got to break free so what you want to do is you want to make them pop that break free and uh what i like to do is i like to stun them first and what that does is it makes it very apparent that they are stunned they they they're stopped they can't do anything and that makes them want to use their break free like crazy so if you're on a healer you go ahead and pop that stun and that'll make them bust their break free right then 
and then you go ahead and debilitate them right afterwards. That's going to make them where they're basically, basically going to be your victim for the next four seconds, or five seconds, I mean, from the debilitate. So go ahead and pop your stun, go ahead and pop your debilitate after they use the break free, and then burst, 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 because they are at your mercy for the next five seconds. So make sure that those poor son of a guns pay for it and they're most likely going to die right after that unless they're getting cross healed and that's a perfect way to kill healers so real simple real simple builder finisher burst you know and then uh use your stun let them pop their break free and then debilitate them and if somehow they get out of that then you can flinching strike interrupt them easy stuff so I hope you guys enjoyed the build video here. Uh, I kind of got a little bit long winded about it, but I hope you enjoyed it. And if you found it helpful, make sure that you hit the like button and make sure that you get in on the contest that we're doing with this video. So yeah, make sure you're subscribed as well. Also, if you are new to Rift, make sure that you check out in the description below. Uh, there is a link to sign up to Rift, and it is my link. So if you follow through with that link, not only do you get rewards, I get rewards, and also you're on my friends list and stuff like that so that we can play together and all that good stuff, and you'll be able to see whenever I'm online on all of my characters, and you'll automatically be on all of my lists. Um, also, if you need a guild that is a PvP guild, we are a very casual PvP guild, as in we PvP quite often, but we also do not grill each other. If you are the type that likes to scream at your guildies for thinking that you didn't get a heal or they're not peeling off of you or something like that, this isn't the guild for you. This is the guild for you if you just want to play with people and have a good time and yeah, enjoy Rift. So... I guess that's about it. As usual, guys, my name is Grim, and I'll see you next time.